First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled on the Affordable Care Act case, and it's a big victory for the president. Good evening. It's Thursday, June 25th. I'm David Jolly. And I'm Taylor Trache. Thanks for joining us. The ruling was that federal subsidies critical to the president's signature health care plan can be paid in every state. Steve Handelsman has the latest from Washington. ACA from the North! Outside the Supreme Court, keeping his health care coverage in Michigan is Brent Vesey. I'm extremely happy with it. You keep your insurance yes. and your subsidy, yes. which you need. And a lot of the people I know will as well. So this is a big sigh of relief for millions of people across the country. 6.4 million of the 10 million signed up for Obamacare could have lost subsidies that average $3,200 a year. They'd signed up on the healthcare.gov federal exchange. And the Obamacare law reads, subsidies are paid in exchanges established by the state. But by six to three, the justices look past that. Chief Justice John Roberts again siding with Obamacare. Congress passed the Affordable Care Act, Roberts wrote, to improve health insurance markets, not to destroy them. Frustrated conservative Justice Antonin Scalia joked, we should start calling this law SCOTUS Care. It's a huge victory for President Obama. After multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. But so is the Republican battle against Obamacare. And we're going to continue our efforts uh, to do everything we can to put the American people back in charge of their own health care. But the next round will not be at the high court. I'm Steve Handels in NBC News, Washington. Here in Florida, there was rejoicing and disapproval from elected officials. Florida Senate Democratic leader Arthenia Joyner released this statement. Florida dodged a massive bullet with the ruling today, and 1.3 million residents now have the high court's affirmation that their health insurance will remain within reach. However, there were some who immediately voiced their disapproval of the ruling. Gainesville area Congressman Ted Yoho released this statement. Obamacare, which was rammed through Congress without any bipartisan dialogue on how best to provide health care coverage for all Americans, is bad for patients, families, and our economy. A Clay County man has been arrested and charged in the murder of his son. Dana Peterson was charged with second-degree murder after a shooting in Keystone Heights. Clay County Sheriff's Office says Peterson shot and killed his son in their home on Tuesday afternoon. Peterson is being held in the Clay County Jail without bond. Well, it started to rain a little bit earlier than usual today. We we're kind of hoping it stays away tonight. UF forecaster Brittany Van Voorhees is in the Weather Center. Brittany, where are those storms heading right now? Well, we're mostly clear here in north central Florida at this time. Still seeing a couple pop-up showers in the area, but most of the earlier heavy rain that we saw has moved east onto the first coast. We're still seeing some spotty showers along the I-95 corridor over near St. Augustine, Crescent City and Pearson. Still seeing a couple pop-up showers though down near Chiefland and Cedar Key. And check out the time lapse from today. You can see that it was a nice morning and then you see that Gulf Sea Breeze just rolling in right around 12 o'clock and that's when we saw the majority of our showers here in North Central Florida today. Hour by hour for tonight, 83 degrees by 6 p.m., 79 by 10. See, still seeing a small chance for rain with some isolated showers possible. But coming up in my full weather forecast, I'll let you know rain chances for the weekend. Back to you. Thanks, Brittany. Well, the weather earlier today still couldn't stop a celebration. Four years in the making. It all came together today in Gainesville. Peaceful Paths opened their new campus today to help victims of domestic violence. WUFT's Jacob Schroll joins us now in the newsroom. Jacob, what kind of benefits will this provide? Well, Taylor, David, Peaceful Paths say that they hope to provide as many as 300 adult and child survivors of domestic violence every year. They held their dedication ceremony at noon today to celebrate the new campus's completion. It's, it's a phenomenal day. And it was a phenomenal day not only for Peaceful Paths, but also for the people that they care for. The organization provides assistance for the victims of domestic violence, and today, they say that those services have gotten a lot better. We had some people visiting from the state of Florida, and they were amazed at what we were able to do with Jay Dutton and Paul Schilling started the project by asking Peaceful Paths a simple question. If you could have anything to help out, what would you want? Their answer 
was to purchase part of an 18-acre lot to provide a wider range of services. The two local doctors donated a million dollars, which was matched by an additional three million from the federal government. Peaceful Paths has been offering emergency services to victims of domestic violence, but now with its new campus, it can now offer long-term housing and support as well. This campus, from conception to completion, has been four years in the making, and Peaceful Paths couldn't be happier with what they can now offer. We will increase the number of people that we can help. We will provide bigger services, better services, longer term services. I think that is, as Jay said, this is going to be something the community can be incredibly proud of. These six long term units with 20 rooms total will help victims and their families out of danger and back onto their feet. Peaceful Paths says that survivors of domestic abuse often end up going back to their abuser because they have no other options. And just the thought of being able to help people out of those kind of situations is enough for Dunton and those behind the project. And I really do believe that the true measure of a community is how they treat their most vulnerable citizens. And Although today was the official dedication, they don't expect to officially open the doors of the new campus until next month. But they still offer services in their main office located right across the street. Reporting live from the newsroom, Jacob Schroll, WUFT News. Thank you, Jacob. A Marion County Spring was unanimous, unanimously approved to be added to the Florida Forever list. The Silver Spring Sand Hill site is now on a priority list for state purchase. Marion County would still manage the land if the state buys the 470 acres. We're really looking to provide outdoor recreation opportunities in Marion County that are not already here. So we don't have an archery facility or place for our, our hunters to do target practice and that sort of thing. Marion County already maintains over 600 acres of state-owned land. Well, keeping kids active during the summer can be a little difficult, but with the help of one high school, local law enforcement has found a creative way to do so. WFT's Ryan Nelson was at Buholtz High School to see one of those ways. The Alachua County Sheriff's Office created a week-long athletics tournament called Cops vs. Kids to keep kids occupied in the long summer months. So in an attempt to get them out of the house and active, we decided to have this week where they could do lots of fun activities that were positive with law enforcement officers. Sheriff's deputies took time from their work week to spend with high school and middle school students from Gainesville. Basically, we wanted to do something that would get the kids off the streets and doing something productive with themselves during the day. Sometimes when they're idle, we find that there's a lot of things that happen criminally because they have nothing else to do. In addition to getting decent exercise, kids enjoyed gaining new experiences. Playing a new sport because I've never played volleyball, so it was a lot of fun to learn a new game and um, just hang out with friends. Sports included basketball, softball, football, and volleyball, and featured athletes from Buholtz. Ryan Nelson, WUFT News. Today marked the end of the week-long tournament between the Alatra County Sheriff's deputies and the local Gainesville kids. AAA says almost 42 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more this 4th of July, the most since 2007. Rising income, a strong employment market, and lower gas prices are prompting more Americans to get in their cars, board airplanes, and take buses, trains, and cruise ships to get away this 4th of July. Nearly 85% of travelers will drive to their destinations and enjoy the lowest gas prices in five years. The current price for a gallon of gas is about $2.78 a gallon. That's 88 cents cheaper than it was at July 4th last year. However, AAA found that money saved on gas may be going toward higher hotel rates. Well, WUFT First of Five is just getting started. Coming up, two Charleston victims were laid to rest today. Plus, new research is looking promising for cancer patients. Those stories and more coming up after the break. We'll be right back. 